I wanted to talk about a really important concept that I came up with years ago called, and I call it diversity pockets. And it's really important for wildlife and whitetails. And I want you to understand how to apply it to a big open field like this or in the hardwoods, in conifers, in big shrub country. And so I hope this illustration helps you. Right here is very important to us. We're actually expanding this cover up to our field edge right here. We have a lot of switchgrass right here. Unfortunately, right along this edge during the winter time, we get drifts here and these drifts could be four feet deep right now. We, we haven't had a real appreciable melt since December. And so we've had times where it's been minus 15 degrees after we get home from dinner in the evening. So we get a lot of cold temperatures out here in Minnesota and I, obviously it's a lot colder through North Dakota. It's, it's colder here than where we were at in Southwest Wisconsin, just 50 miles away. The bottom line is we have these open areas like this. We want to fill it in. So how do we do that? For one, we start with this outside edge of switchgrass. During the hunting season, the switchgrass is six, seven feet tall. We can actually access it. We can get around this big upland area, the top of this hollow, this draw without spooking deer. So when I talk about diversity pockets in this location, I look at, well, we got a pocket of trees right over here. We have a pocket of briars over here, another pocket of gray dogwood over here. Those are all pockets coming in, that's great. I wanna protect it all with switchgrass. Now, a lot of times I'm planting pockets of switchgrass within here to fill that space, say you have an open field, so you're surrounding it in thick switch. In our case, it's about 40 feet wide, and then we're creating those pockets on the inside. Now we're blessed with some growth in here and some regeneration, so we have that early successional growth, but a lot of it, like gray dogwood or cherry, isn't that great a browse. And so what I wanna do is plant some browse species in here. Things like red osier dogwood, dappled willow, hybrid poplar. Those are all cuttings that I can get from big rock trees. What we're gonna do in this location, Tom and Seth from Big Rock Trees are gonna come out. We're gonna make 30, 30 foot diameter circles. It's about 94 feet of fence. We're gonna put four of them out here. And we put those browse species in those fences because if we don't, the deer are going to eat them, unfortunately. There's just too much activity with ag land right behind Dillon right here. You can see our old cornfield over there. There's a lot of deer that, that take shape in here, and move through here, and they're just gonna demolish those hybrid poplars, red osier dogwood, even silky willows, dappled willow, those browse species. But we want those browse species in there because we want this to be attractive to deer. It's already getting attractive, very attractive for pheasant, for rabbits. Sorry to interrupt, but we have a lot going on with this food plot and many more. I can't wait to plant this. Check out what we're planting on WHS Wildlife Blends. All 12 of our blends are out. You can order bulk seed, buckwheat, and rye. Check it out, we have a new website. Click on seed on the whitetailpotatsolutions.com. It'll take you right to the, the new blend site. Appreciate you for checking it out and taking the time to watch us. Hardwood regeneration down on the wood line. So we have a perfect nesting habitat combination for turkeys, but we really wanna fill this basin with deer. That's the problem with old field conversion where you just let it go to early successional growth. It can take 15, 20, 25 years or more to actually fill in as in the case right here to where it actually can hold whitetails. So we're trying to speed that along again by putting the cover on the outside and those pockets in the middle. Again, we're gonna put four pockets in here and we'll have those brow species. And then in two years, when those browse species are able to thrive on their own and get eaten back every single year, we'll take the fence off and do it again. And I want you to think about this in reverse. Think about this as having all cover in here, but it's a monoculture. Monoculture of switchgrass, monoculture of shrubs, monoculture of conifers like red cedar. The worst thing you could do is just rip out everything because you already have a base form of cover. You have switchgrass, you have shrubs, you have red cedar. And there's wildlife that's relating to it. So if you rip it all down, you just destroyed a bunch of wildlife. And that's a sin in my book. You know, I don't think people should ever do that. They'll, they have uh, red cedar areas, uh, basically um, removal projects in some states where they'll take a big area of red cedar and get rid of them all, and put tree tubes in for hardwoods. Don't let everyone, anyone ever tell you that's wildlife cover or restoring wildlife habitat. No, it's just timber value that they're trying to create. Big difference. The higher the timber value, the lower the wildlife value, the lower the wildlife value, the higher the timber value. Always always make that connection out. It's very important to understand that. So you go into that red cedar area, instead of removing everything, destroying wildlife habitat and setting yourself back a decade because you put a bunch of hardwoods in there, instead look at keeping that outside exterior like we do right here, like we planted the 40 foot wide to switch around here. 
We actually have a switch line down the middle of it too on either sides of an inner road. Think about taking that cedar, leaving that outside layer, and then going on the inside and removing about 50, 60% in pockets. If it's 40 acres, of an area and you want that all to be wildlife and, wi and whitetail habitat, then focus on one or two acre pockets, larger, because you want less work, just volume, remove that cedar, get it out of there, make sure you spot spray for any cedar growth in the future. You don't want any conifers at all because a conifer is a conifer, just like a grass is a grass. If it's more grass, it's just more grass. It's not diversity because you have five different types. Red pine, white pine, jack pine, scotch pine, it's not diversity, it's pine. Hope that makes sense. But you take that red cedar, you remove those pockets and allow hardware regeneration to take place. Shrubs, brow shrubs, like we're getting from big rock trees, those kind of box elder seeds, red maple seeds, briars, whatever it might be, whatever's in the ground comes in. Could be ragweed, could be goldenrod. Let whatever broadleaf, you don't want grass, because that's similar to conifer, it's just a base form of cover and you don't want conifer. So imagine that 40 acres now in a pattern. And Dylan, I don't know if you can see this, we sometimes draw on, on the snow, but if you look at down here, that's at 40 acres, that outside edge, you leave in red cedar, and then you go in and you remove red cedar in pockets on the inside of here, so that you can diversify the entire area. Hope that makes sense. So those are the diversity pockets. That's what you're trying to create for diversity within that area. Same with hardwoods. You have a 10 acre stand of hardwoods, you want to diversify it, get rid of the hardwoods. Now hardwood regeneration's good, that, that adds something, but I want to see conifer in those pockets. Maybe you're cutting down pockets within that 10 acres, so it totals about four or five acres within that stand, if you want that all to be bedding. You could add conifers within those cut tops that aren't growing the non-hinge cut, so it protects them from deer. So now you're adding the diversity of conifer in there mixed with the hardwood regeneration. We get briars and shrubs growing in. I define the four bedding habitat types. Wrote about that in Quality of Whitetails years ago. Briars, grasses, weeds, shrubs, conifers, hardwood regeneration. Get all four of those to take place in one spot and you're creating bedding area, true bedding, and you're creating a ton of wildlife cover. So think about that with diversity pockets. You're taking an old field, you're adding pockets to it, you're surrounding it in switchgrass to protect it. That switchgrass is going to give me the fastest, tallest growth to actually have deer in here during the fall. It doesn't matter, it'd be two years, it's six, seven feet. This is first year switchgrass right here. Wait till you see it next year when it's six, seven feet tall, let alone the next year after that, third year when it's seven, eight feet tall. We're in the maintenance mode right now, take care of it, let it go for decades. But we're filling these pockets in here, we're adding what the deer need. The base cover is switchgrass. Hope that makes sense. The base cover in that red cedar example is red cedar. Unfortunately, in hardwoods, you have a lot to, to really create a, an a appreciable amount of base cover. It's hardwood regeneration in that case, shrubs, briars that might be coming in those conifers. But what you're doing, whether it's even shrubs, even if it's an invasive shrub like autumn olive in an area, don't rip out the whole 15 acres of autumn olive and destroy the wildlife population and kill a bunch of animals. That's a sin in my book. I, again, I don't, I don't appreciate that type of habitat work at all. Instead, have a viable replacement if you're going to ever remove an invasive. Take that autumn olive, remove 50% of it. Leave the outside for cover. So it's screening the inside. Leave the inside pockets of autumn olive. You're removing pockets of autumn olive, you're killing it, return it to hardwood regeneration, briars, conifer pockets. I hope you start to see what you're doing here. You're really taking what you don't have, replace it within those pockets so that you can provide that cover. And whether you're looking at a hardwood and you're taking out pockets within that hardwoods and converting it to something else, creating hardwood regeneration, tops on the ground, conifers, briars, shrubs, Taking an open field like this, you're adding browse species to it and shrubs, you're surrounding it in switchgrass. We have switchgrass all the way around this field so you can start to hold wildlife. We're gonna, we're gonna add 100 yards of wildlife around this entire top, let alone our food plot over there. We're actually working back in the hardwoods. What do we not have in the hardwoods back there? We don't have pockets of open hardwood regeneration and conifers. That's what we're adding back there. We don't have conifers out here. I have a bunch of uh, Norway spruce. We'll plant those in pockets out here. So we're adding conifer while surrounding it in switchgrass. We have the hardwood regeneration pockets, gray dogwood thickets, briars. We're trying to create as much diversity in pockets as possible in this. Doesn't matter if it's conifers, 
hardwood regeneration, shrubs. You can still make those pockets. Those are what I call diversity pockets. It really lives and breathes and changes with the type of habitat you have on your land. A bottom line is the same concept everywhere, a white tail roams. You can apply diversity pockets to your land on your property this year. I hope you can because it can really increase not only the whitetail value and whitetail hunting opportunities you have going into the fall, but really explode those wildlife populations in general, whether it's grouse here, pheasants, rabbits, turkey nesting, birds, butterflies, bees, and everything in between. It's a great concept of whitetail and wildlife management and habitat that you can apply to your property right now, this coming spring. Doesn't look like spring right now, but it's coming. Dylan said he saw some robins. I haven't seen any yet today, but we heard some birds chirping today. Were those robins? They were robins. They were robins. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> they were in the distance and I heard something. I even had Dylan stop. Do you hear birds? <laughs> but anyways, it's kind of howling out right now. We're going to get back inside and I hope you had versity pockets on your mind because it can really change your habitat and hunt for all species this year. Now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out, though. I encourage you. I appreciate you checking it out, whether you buy anything or not. Really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.